Welcome to the ACE Emerging Professionals webcast, a series of short sessions featuring uh, conversations with a wide range of inspirational emerging professionals on the most challenging topics in our industry. In today's episode, how to make a difference, we'll be discussing the topic of what is the role of emerging professionals in influencing the industry a key and key insights from the future of the workplace research. I'm Wojciech Szewczak, National Chair for the ACE Emerging Professionals, and I'll be the host for this episode. Today, I'm with Georgia Hughes, Global Capabilities and Culture Shift Program Manager at Arcadis, and my predecessor, who was leading the ACE Emerging Professionals Group for the last three years. Georgia, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Wojciech. Lovely to be invited back. <laughs> So before we move um, to the main conversation, I just wanted to provide a, a short introduction to the, to the AC Emerging Professionals Group. So we are a network of the next generation of industry leaders within the Association for Consultancy and Engineering. Our members range from those at the start of their careers um, to more experienced professionals and, and come from a broad range of consultancy and engineering disciplines. Our network provides opportunity to establish a strong networking base, uh, develop new skills, influence industry leading research and hear from inspirational and <clears throat> influential thought leaders. I will start with my with my first question, Georgia. So in your opinion, what impact emerging professionals have on our industry? I think it's huge. And I think it's a vastly untapped talent, right? We are emerging professionals if we class them broadly as 16 to 35 year olds. That talent and that passion that we have is, is massive. It's huge. We're learning, we're coming out of university, we're learning things that are at the forefront of, of academic research, or we're doing our apprenticeships and we're running through that at the same time. Again, we're using that forefront of academic research and filling, backfilling that into the work that we're doing today. And I, I strongly believe that more should be done across industry to bring the emerging professionals into the room. I think as the future custodians of the of industry of what of what we do here, we should be you know, we should be asking those questions. Can we can we participate? Can we have a voice? Can we talk it through? It's been um, my time with emerging professionals was absolutely eye opening to the level of passion and drive there is in our industry in order to make a difference, in order to make things better. I think it's probably fair to say, and again, generalisation, so please don't hold me to this, <laughs> but I think it's probably fair to say that a lot of people join our industry because they want to make a difference. They want to make a difference when it comes to how we design and build our local communities. They want to make a difference with how it comes to how we're looking at international communities and how we can support and develop those forward as well. But predominantly, I think, especially over the last sort of five to ten, sort of five, three to five years, people have been joining our industry because they want to have a direct impact and be directly responsible for helping to drive down our carbon consumptions, for helping to make the communities the world that we operate in far more sustainable and I think that is a that's a really powerful piece that we should be harnessing more as industry to drive that passion forwards. I had a, a really exciting opportunity at the end of last year to um, present to the Welsh Infrastructure Board about you know how can they look to set up a, a youth board and what would that look like and I came across the most fascinating 16 year old Holly who is driving this forward. She's she's still at school, right? She's still, she's doing, I, th I think she's doing her GCSEs or she's possibly in into her first year of, uh, of, of A-levels. And that passion, that drive, that motivation that she's got to be able to create, to want to create more sustainable, a more sustainable community for herself, for her friends, also for future generations behind her. And we do not use that talent enough within our industry today to be driving change forward. And I think there's a real call out there to industry leads to really actually start to understand what the emerging professionals within their organisation want to do, what they want to be a part of, what are their values? How can you harness those values to really help drive industry and those organisations forward? I think that reverse mentoring is a good start, but it is 
a drop in the ocean compared to what they could be doing and compared to what they should be doing. And I think that there is, there is, I would put the call to those industry leads to actually have those open and honest conversations with the people 16 to 35 that are working within their organisations and ask them what do they want to see. Why are they working? Why are they working there? Why have they chosen specifically to work in that organisation doing that role? What is it that drives them? Because if you can if you can find out, if you can understand what drives somebody, what are their passions, what are their values, the motivation for them to want to continue working within this sector is huge because they are having a real impact. They're having meaningful and purposeful work that aligns with their values. I completely with you. I, I completely agree with you, Georgia. Um, that was basically the main reason why I decided to step up to the national chair role and to 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 lead and enable our group to influence our industry. And I've been in this role for two months now, and I have to tell you that um, I'm I'm impressed about the level of passion for making a difference. Yeah. Um, um, so, so I'm really looking forward to what, what we can do with this group in the next two years. Yeah, it's huge. It's it, it's enormous, and you know, you even if you can just get your hands around some of it, the impact that you'll have from that will be phenomenal. I mean, look at the look at the. I was lucky enough to be able to achieve during during my tenure with the future of the workplace support and being able to drive people forward from that. So I think you've you've only got positive things ahead of you, Wojciech. <laughs> sure. Um, so in your in your previous role as, as as chair, you've been spearheading the future of the workplace research, what you just mentioned, uh, which aimed to investigate and generate a consensus on priorities for action based on a series of detailed interviews with uh, emerging professionals from across the industry. So I'm interested to hear about what are the key insights from the future of the workplace research. Mm. Sure, I think probably worth worth stating that this this piece of research was, I suppose, really born out of again, like you've experienced over the last two months, having those conversations with the broad spectrum of emerging professionals that are within our industry, and also really looking to understand what drives people out of our industry. Why do people why do people leave the built to natural environment and go into other sectors, into other industries? What does that change? And this was this report was really driven from the the fact that you know, apprenticeships, graduates, however you enter into the workforce within our sector, you have been learning again generalisation, but give or take, you 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 have been learning right from primary school all the way up to to further education if you've gone down that route. But then you're still learning when you come into your role, and the majority of our of our majority of our professional services require you to have some form of chartership and so therefore you are constantly working towards that form of chartership throughout your first what, three to five years of, of, of joining the workforce and then all of a sudden it drops off after you become chartered and understanding then what does the where can you go from this aspect becomes really difficult so it was originally sort of set up to look at as a workplace perspective alongside the future consultancy that Hannah Vickers was running, how do we create a workplace that enables the future of consultancy? And that was sort of really how we how we started to approach this piece of work. But what we started to uncover was um, far more intricate than that, in that it's also looking at, you know, the workforce itself. There are now something like, I think there's, last count, I think there are five different generations in the working environment. So what does each one, each one of those generations has, has different needs, has different requirements, but also approaches their, their work life, their personal life in very different ways. And you know, the values and things that are aligned to that have changed dramatically. We're also looking at, and again, the roles that are needed, you know, are we still going to need to have engineers as we know them as we know and see them today is that still going is that type of role still going to be applicable in 10 years time possibly not because as we're looking at standardization and automation of the roles that we do actually yes we'll still have engineers 
but my prediction is, and the likes of um, Autodesk as well have been, have been sharing a lot of information around this, is that actually fundamentally what an engineer does will become automated. However, we start we need to start to be able to move that cohort of people into a different space of consultancy, into advisory, into sort of that that next level of work. And how do we encourage innovation within the productivity game that's unlocked from those elements of of standardization and automation within their day-to-day -day roles. There's a huge opportunity in there. And so with the role families that we were looking at, we had sort of sort of two fairly sort of standardized approaches in terms of what it was it's looking at, dependent on whether you were in a traditional space or whether you were in a more um, technology focused area from that side. And then lastly, we looked at the workplace and what should the culture of a workplace be, broadly speaking, for emerging professionals and other generations as well to be able to thrive within the workplace. And that's where we created our workplace promise, which mm -hmm. is all around what should, what can, what can and should employers be providing for employees, but also what should employees be giving back to their employers. So it's a quite a quite a symbiotic promise, if you will, because it's not just about what does the workforce want. But it's also about what can the workforce give back and how that sits through. Oh, well, that, that was a really good uh, summary. Th th thank you for providing uh, us with, with this summary. So my last question of this episode is about what are three things individuals can do to make a difference in your in your personal opinion? It's a good question. Ask questions. Really, seriously, ask questions. Really, genuinely ask an awful lot of questions because if you don't ask the questions, you're never going to know. And I know there's this sort of, it's it said a lot, but as, as it goes, you know, there are, there's no such thing as a silly question and there really isn't any such thing as a silly question. Phrase it in a way that you, phrase it in a way that demonstrates your curiosity, that demonstrates your willingness to grow and demonstrates that you want to understand and learn more. I think if you can do that, people are always open to, to telling you about their story or to telling you about what they're doing and want to impart that knowledge. You just, you just need to ask it in the right way. My second one would be that don't, you shouldn't be afraid to do work that feels like it's beneath you in terms of where you sit. And I say that from a, you know, don't be afraid to be the person who volunteers to go in to take meeting notes because you want to sit into a meeting. Or don't be afraid to be the person that has to do what you might think is a sort of mundane, monotonous task. Because these these things, these discrete pieces of work build trust. They build trust and they build reliability within your project teams. And, and ultimately, it depend it doesn't matter where you work across what industry across what sector we need to be building that trust and so the more you can build that trust with people the more people will then start to trust you to and, and then want you to be on projects that are you know perhaps a bit more exciting than what you're already on or is a project that you want to be able to do to further develop your career and to be able to move forward from that so always be prepared to do that work and do it with a smile as well Make sure that you know you're you're building that trust. You're building those relationships with individuals, with people, with your peers, with your seniors to be able to step that forward. And then finally, I would say that the third thing that you should that we that emerging professionals can do would be around not being fixated on a final endpoint goal for your career not being fixated on on where you want to get to in in 10 years time if you'd asked me two years ago where i wanted to be in 10 years time i would have told you i wanted to be ceo of mars or of lego right that's where i wanted to get to and so i was working towards that pathway but actually things pop up different opportunities pop up different things emerge and you start to actually really realize that you want to move down one pathway more so than than another and actually you start to then redevelop and change and start to understand exactly where you think you might want to end up. For me that's um, as Vucic said at the start of this I'm the global capability and cultural shift program manager and that's based the, the capability building and, and the cultural side of what I do 
re it gets me up in the morning, right? It makes me excited. It's what I want to do. It's what I enjoy. I like people. I like understanding the intricacies of people. And I didn't realise that until I started on this journey. But I think don't be afraid that your end goal will shift and change and move and shift. And you should be taking every opportunity that you can to explore what that looks like and, and to help you step forward. You know, whether that's whether that's that you want to move down a technical career track or whether that's that, you know, you want to have a short term goal like Wojciech of being you know, the regional lead for the emerging professionals. Right take these opportunities and really drive them forward and if you do get the opportunity to join a regional committee like the emerging professionals or like a handful of others although biased towards the emerging professionals i would strongly encourage that people do join these sorts of things because the the camaraderie that you get with individuals and the relationships that you build will be relationships that will last you through your professional career Anecdotally, Wojciech and I met on a project four <laughs> years ago now, and yeah, you, yeah, and the this is the these are the relationships that that drive you forward. You know, Wojciech and I, have, if, if we've continued talking all the way through from that side, we've built up a good professional relationship, but also a a personal one as well. And it's that you know, the emerging professionals is is a way to be able to build and develop that for you in a space that's safe. It's with your peers. It's it's starting to get you to understand more broadly you know what opportunities are out there how can you shift and build and so i think i think that might have been four so apologies for check well I, you, you should so many um, so many um useful useful information and the ways how how emerging professionals can can make a difference so thank you so much for that uh yes i think we are out of time <laughs> however if you if you want to read more about the future of the workplace research um, go to the AC website and download a full full version of the uh, of the report. Um, Georgia, thank you so much for your time and sharing your insights with us. Uh, many thanks for listening. I hope you found our conversation insightful and interesting. Uh, now we would like to hear from you, emerging professionals. And the question I prepared for this episode is about what skills you think you need to elevate yourself as emerging professional. Please let us know um, what are your thoughts in the, in the comment box below. Um, we are currently working on arranging a series of events on developing our soft skills and your input um, to this is going to be valuable. You've been listening to the AC Emerging Professionals webcast. To find out more about the webcast, upcoming episodes and events, visit us on on our website or on our LinkedIn page. Thank you.